Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Traveling Shaver. This week, we are talking about a beautiful little town in the south that I had never heard of until I was asked to go there. And that town is Tupelo, Mississippi. But before we talk about Tupelo and the wonderful things to do in that area, a little bit of history of the town, let's talk about the gear first. So tonight, I am using, now where did I put it? I am going to be using Vanule Bay Rum. Now I'm a huge fan of Bay Rum. This smells fantastic. Mm. This seems to be a little bit on the sweeter side of Bay Rums. So it's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so, I mean, it's exceptionally well blended, but if you look up the scent notes, there are um, allspice, uh, nutmeg, cloves, um, orange, let's see, capers, and a couple other spices, I believe. And I believe this is also their vegan offering. Uh, so, we'll see how that goes. Now, as with Vanule, uh, a little bit, I mean, if it really excels if you use a little bit more soap and less water getting it to the nice consistency of whipping cream. That's where Vanilla really shines. Phenomenal soap. I uh, just need to use maybe a little more than you're used to. You want a nice thick lather with Vanilla. Now, the brush I'm using, of course, will be my wonderful Starling. This time it'll be on the purple cap or the uh, safety bar version. And again, I'll be using the Chop Shop from Craven Shaving, the uh, travel brush here. And as you can see, look at those peaks. And instead of using my Vanule silicone bowl today, I'll be using just my normal store-bought, kind of manufactured lather bowl. I wanted to give the uh, silicone bowl a little bit of a break. I'm using that a lot lately, both at home and on the road. So. Without further ado, let's get into this. So Tupelo is a beautiful, beautiful city in Mississippi. Uh, as I mentioned, I had never heard of it until I was asked to go there. And I was talking to my parents and I, they asked where I was going and uh, I said, yeah, I'm going to, uh, to Tupelo, Mississippi. And of course, my dad, who I swear has been everywhere, says, oh yeah, Tupelo, I've been there. This town that. And he says a couple of, something else that I'll get to later on. But a little bit of the history of the town is look at that, look at that peak. Is it was incorporated in 1866. And it was the first town in the Tennessee Valley to get power. Now, it's a beautiful little town, as I mentioned. It was also the seventh largest city in Mississippi. And there's uh, a lot of interesting little things about the town as well. Now, it was devastated in the 1936 tornado. And that is still, to this day, one of the deadliest tornadoes in U.S. history. Now at the time, uh, regretfully, racism was still very prevalent, in, especially in the South. And the newspapers at the time were not reporting on pretty much anything of any minority. So if you were not Caucasian, tough beans. So it is difficult for historians to, to get an accurate count of how many people perished in that tragedy of that tornado. Now to get to Tupelo, uh, you can go through one of two airports. If you want to go to Memphis, that will only be an hour drive for you.
if you want to go to Birmingham, Alabama, it's a two-hour drive. But depending on the airline which you fly, one of those might be better options. When I came in, because I fly Delta, it actually made more sense I'd get there earlier if I went to Alabama versus Tennessee. I will say the drive from Birmingham, Alabama to Tupelo is rather boring. So make sure you have, you've either slept really well or you have somebody to keep you awake. There's not a lot to see on the in between. Now, uh, there are a couple of notable people from Tupelo. And we'll get to the most famous resident last. As I'm sure it's somebody whom everyone is familiar. So you have Alex Carrington, a football player. There was uh, Brandon Woodruff, plays baseball. Another uh, baseball player is uh, Chris Stratton. And I have no idea who they play for or anything like that. I'm not a huge baseball fan. I haven't followed baseball in I don't know how many years. Oh man, this stuff just feels so good. I think I added a little bit too much water to this. But it's still nice and peaky. Still feels amazing on the face. I love the uh, the nourishing feel, skin food feel you get with Vanille with the nice thick lather. And that's what I have right here. That's just beautiful. Now the most notable resident of Tupelo is none other what am I doing, than the king of rock and roll himself, Elvis Presley. Now Elvis and his family lived in Tupelo until he was about 14 years old. At 14, they packed up and moved to Memphis. However, it was in Tupelo that Elvis heard and got his love of music. Uh, there was a lot of churches in the area, and Elvis and his friends would go and sit outside the various churches during service and listen to the music. So he was heavily influenced by gospel and country music. And I want to say at the age of 13, I can't remember exactly what, how old, Maybe he was a little slightly younger. Maybe it was 10. No, he, had a, he has a guitar, but he was 12, so I think it may be 10 or 11. Uh, for his birthday, he wanted either a BB gun or a bicycle. And his mom, oh, it feels so good, was a very, uh, Kind of, oh, well, let's say she was a typical Southern lady. 
and worried about the safety of little Ellis. Look at that peak. Look at that. Bailey is awesome stuff, by the way. Now, because she was worried about his safety, she wasn't going to buy him a BB gun or a bicycle. But she took him down to the local hardware store and let him pick out his birthday present. I want to say this is a 10. And they went to the shopkeeper and said they're looking for something for his birthday. And, and uh, shopkeeper brought out a guitar. Ellis didn't want the guitar, of course, because he wanted his BB gun or a bike. But rather than get nothing for his birthday, he chose a guitar. And kind of the rest is history. So if you go to Tupelo, there is this, uh, of course they have a museum for Elvis. And they have moved the house where he was born. They moved uh, the church where he attended with his family. And a couple other things as well. They have a replica or a, uh, the same model car that his father owned when they moved from Tupelo to Memphis. Now, regretfully, I got there after the museum closed. But you can still go around, you can still see outside, uh, you can still see the house from the outside. You can see the church, there's a whole bunch of plaques that have quotes from a lot of various friends of Elvis from when he was growing up. Um, they have a life-size statue of him at age 12. With the guitar. And if you go up a hill, there is a life-size statue of him at, I want to say 14 when he moved out of Tupelo. And a larger-than-life statue when he's wearing, you know, the, the famous rhinestone jumpsuit that had the eagle on the back. Kind of arms spread looking to the heavens. Uh, they have a, a larger than life statue of that to represent Elvis's humble beginnings and his larger than life attitude uh, and impact on the world. But it's very cool to see this museum and see the house where he was born and a couple other things. Read some quotes and hear, read stories about Elvis growing up. in this quaint southern town, which I had previously never heard of. Now also in the town, there are a lot of good restaurants as well. Uh, so you can drive around right by the, er the area where his house and everything is, the kind of museum, is a diner. Now on the inside, it's, it's still decorated in the same way as it was when Elvis was alive. Uh, he would go back to Tupelo occasionally and uh, eat in this little diner. And they have a picture of him sitting in one of the booths. And they have that picture of him in the booth right by the booth, if that makes sense. So you can sit in the booth where he sat and see a picture of him sitting in said booth. Now, a slight word of warning, if you plan on going to this diner, it is cash only. So there's that. Make sure you take cash if you find to eat there. And if you go down to uh, downtown, you can still see the hardware store where Elvis received his very first guitar. is now an Ace Hardware, but it's still in the same location where it was. All those years ago.
when Elvis got his first guitar. So that was really cool to see. I, I ended up stumbling upon the hardware store. I was uh, leaving the museum when I saw the hardware store. I was like, oh crap, there it is. So I took a picture of it, of course. And I got my thumb <laughs> in the picture as well. Because yeah, I was taking a stop sign or a stoplight. And I didn't know how long it would be until the light changed. So Tupelo is a nice little gem of a town with real good food, typical Southern hospitality, so it's phenomenal. You know, people there are extremely nice. Everywhere I went, restaurants, just general stores, and people in the South are nice anyway. I don't know what it was, but Tupelo seemed to have kicked it up a notch. They were extremely welcoming down there. And I thoroughly enjoy this town. Oh, getting there can be challenging. If I ever go back, yeah, I'm doing Memphis, not Alabama. Although, because I flew in Alabama, I was able to knock off my 50th state, so I've been all 50 states. So that's a bonus. And that's kind of why I flew into Alabama, to be honest, is I want to make sure I got all 50. Extremely comfortable, nice slickness, cushion, and glide. Ah, there we go. And had a really close shave. I just wish I could remember how many she has run this blade. That's the hard part with uh, traveling with these gem razors or gem style razors is the blades can last quite a while. And before my last trip, well before vacation actually, I lost track of how many shades I've had on this blade, but it's still going strong. No tugging, no irritation. Just a very nice shave here. So, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm not gonna bore you with the cleanup. But again, the products I used this evening are Vanule Bay Rum. Fantastic soap, beautiful scent. If you like Bay Rum, definitely give them, give Vanule a shot. Uh, this is a one ounce sample size. The soap itself is rel relatively Soft, and I love the little patterns that they put in here. As you can see, it's scooped out a little bit there to put in the bowl for lathering. Lathered up with my, make sure I get this right here, my Craving Shaving Chop Shop Travel Brush. Love this thing. Use my Starling, this time with the Safety Bar Plate, with plenty of lather remaining. Lather for days in this. So I'll probably end up shaving my head off camera. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you found this semi-entertaining at least. And I hope to catch you guys in the next episode. Have a good one.